Hi everyone, welcome back to the business of sustainability. Today we have Alan Taransky joining us. He is the president and beekeeper at Glory Bee. Welcome, Alan. It's great to be here, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm very excited for our conversation today. Right before jumping on with you, I actually ran over to my pantry and I just have to show you, I have two of Glory Bee's honeys with me today. One from Washington, clearly here in Seattle, and then one that I haven't tried before, but it said it's organic and fair trade. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. I, I spent a lot of time in Washington, so I'm a huge Washington fan and it's always great to have local honey. And the first fair trade honey we identified was in Brazil, uh, in Northeastern Brazil. And I oh, wow. was able to go visit some communities there and meet the people and the beekeepers. It was awesome. That's amazing. Well, I'm excited to hear more uh, about your honey and about your company. But first, I would love to learn about you as well. How did you become so passionate about sustainability? Yeah, great question. Uh, when I look at my journey around sustainability, it probably started with just being outdoors. I, I love the outdoors. We camped, we fished. I'm a huge fisherman. And so being in that environment, it just makes you appreciate uh, mother nature, how beautiful creation is. And you want to sustain it because you want to be out there in it. And so for me, that was, that was probably what my roots are laid in. And then I think just seeing my parents make great use of everything. At home, they had a garden. They grew things, they grew their own fruits and vegetables, and they're 77 today, and they're still growing fruits and vegetables uh, with a huge garden. So uh, it's something that they've lived out. And then in the business, my dad started Glory Bee Honey and Glory Bee Bee Box, where we made the beehives. And uh, that was a great experience in seeing how to make the most use out of something that you have. And so he would buy the lumber and they'd produce the bee boxes and there would be extra cuts from making the bee boxes. And he turned those into gift boxes for the honey and into kindling for people who wanted to buy kindling for fires and the sawdust went to pig farmers. So all those are great early examples for me around sustainability. I think for me, what really turned sustainability as an inspiration into a career was really our business ethics teacher in college at Seattle Pacific University who said, you know, you can change the world if you run your business ethically. And for me, that was really inspiring. And I began to think about what that might look like to be involved in a business that was really living out sustainability and thinking through that lens. Thank you so much for sharing sharing that. And I know that Glory Bee itself is the type of company that is really living its sustainability values. Could you share more about that? How, what does sustainability look like at Glory Bee today? Yeah, absolutely. Sustainability for us became a bit more formal starting in 2005. I created our first green team and we began on initiatives like solar power and reclaimed biodiesel running our trucks and how do we use less water in the processing of honey so all those things uh, are embedded in what we do as a part of our operations diverting uh, waste from the landfill and making sure that when we look at how we interact with our supply chain and our customers that we're really doing things that not just make dollars and cents, but really look at their long-term impact on the earth. So we sanitize and wash totes and do, have been doing that for honestly over 30, 35 years. And that's one big area in which we sell, you know, over 12 million pounds of honey and we uh, reuse those totes so that we're not buying new packaging each time we wanna deliver something to our customers. So those are ways in which sustainability looks today and it's embedded into the operations and into our team's work around the supply chain, the questions that we ask partners, we're interested in how they treat their people and how the food is harvested and how it's grown. 
Over 50% of what we sell is organic. We sell non-GMO project verified and sustainably sourced ingredients. That's excellent. You named so many great different initiatives in ways that you're making progress against sustainability today. I just want to write them all down. It, it seems like any business could take action like that uh, if, if they cho chose to today. I'd be curious to hear, what are your sustainability goals? How do you um, kind of set a vision for, for the areas that you want to make progress against? You name so many great initiatives. Do they ladder up to some, uh, um, some kind of key areas for your business? Yeah, one of the areas that we've really been striving towards is to be zero waste. And in an, in an ingredient business as a distributor, that's more difficult than it may sound because you're uh, so reliant on your supply chain. So it's a long-term goal for us. And we've uh, certainly diverted a high percentage of our waste, you know, over 80% diverted. But to achieve zero waste is takes a lot of coordination with your suppliers. Uh, because when you're bringing products in that are organically grown, a lot of which are grown around the world, their access to sustainable materials is not necessarily always there. And then there's changes in government and regulatory uh, agencies and the opportunity to recycle things that um, change. Recently here in Oregon, we had some changes that have impacted our ability to achieve zero waste in terms of the recycling supply chain. So all those things make it difficult, but that's a big one that we're focused on because of the amount of products that we move and the, the tonnage of ingredients. We wanna make sure that um, we can divert as much as possible to reusable uh, supply chains, whether that be metal or plastic or shrink wrap, uh, cardboard, all those different areas. And then we have a huge initiative uh, around saving the bees. We started that in 2012. And so I know about saving the bees, right? Yes. On top of my, my jar here. <laughs> right. So we started that and uh, a lot of our sustainability initiatives are driving towards how can we do more to save the bee? And that initiative is something that's really birthed from an idea that um, it takes a collective, it takes a community. And so for us, that takes customers, it takes suppliers, and it takes us and our great team of people here in order to uh, make strides to save the bee. That's amazing. Love those two different areas. I have to say, I do love the zero waste. I mean, that's very core to Convoy's mission of zero waste uh, ourselves, I think having a goal around zero waste really takes a lot of innovation and creativity. It's not just trying to see incremental improvements. Um, so congrats on, on your progress so far. And that is one thing that I would love to hear more about. How do you measure your progress against these big initiatives on a regular basis? Yeah, we actually put out an annual report. Uh, we are a certified B Corp. So we go through a B Corp certification process and a renewal every two years. And then we put out our own sustainability report every year. And so we, we measure all these things. For instance, we measure our water usage and our electricity usage, and we report on that and our progress. So for instance, the last three years in a row, we've been able to reduce the amount of BTUs per pound of product produced and sold. So that's something that we measure uh, we measure our water usage, as I mentioned, and our ability to reduce our water usage per pound of product produced and sold. So those are uh, measurements that we have, and we just report on it. We're totally transparent about our progress. We report on our waste stream and, and where the different parts of our waste stream goes, uh, whether it's packaging or compost, food donations, uh, what goes to landfill, unfortunately. All those pieces are reported on and measured. Um, so that's one way. And then, you know, in terms of Save the Bee, we have uh, projects and we uh, raise funds. And so since we started in 2012, we've raised over $700,000 to Save the Bee that's gone towards research and education. And we, uh, we stay in touch with those projects and, and report back on the progress being made. So we also put out an annual Save the Bee report. So really for us, that 
we have three mechanisms. It's the B Corp certification, it's our sustainability reporting, and our Save the Bee reporting that we use to measure our progress. I love how simple it sounds. It sounds like every employee or every consumer can easily see kind of where you're focused on, how you're making progress. I found that it, sometimes that's the most difficult part of sustainability, really figuring out how to distill it and synthesize it so that you can actually communicate kind of what's working and, and what the upcoming challenges are. It, it, is, it is difficult because it is complex. I mean, the reality is it is complex. And as I mentioned, we've been doing this uh, formally since 2005. So, you know, we're over 15 years into it. And so it, it takes a lot of work and it takes being really intentional. I think uh, every business faces competitive pressures and ultimately sustainability initiatives are built on a long-term versus a short-term return on investment. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be intentional if you're gonna be a true blue or true green company uh, in terms of making those choices and those investments. And you can't do them all at once at the same time. You have to make them continuously each year uh, invest in sustainability. Mm -hmm. One thing that you mentioned is the return on investment for sustainability. How does Glory B see the value of making kind of a, a long-term investment 15 years so far in sustainability for the business? Yeah, well, I think... Being a family business, being a business that's really rooted in natural and organic foods and caring is certainly a birthplace for us. It's something that um, we've been inspired from our beginnings around sustainability. That said, I think really investing in it and formalizing it has really shown us that the value is in creating clearer, more distinctive partnerships with our clients who also care about it. It really has helped our businesses align and that's created such stronger relationships with our clients. We, we've got clients that we've been supplying for 45 years, 40 years, 30 years, you know, and five, 10 and 20 and all that as well. But all this has allowed us to change the conversation beyond uh, an exchange of goods and services to something that we're doing together. How can we do good together? So I think that's really where the value is because when we do things together, uh, we do things better. That's really great. I, I love that takeaway. Do good together. I completely agree with you, especially as more and more companies are really turning to their supply chains to see pretty significant progress against their sustainability goals, a lot of it has to just be a collaboration. You can't just have a silo where one business is working on something and, and someone is working on something else. Everyone has to have kind of the, the same mindset around wanting to achieve this bigger mission together. Absolutely. I think that was one of the things that happened with our Save the Bee initiative is that, you know, the first year, we, we brought in, you know, maybe $12,000 from our 1% of sales around our retail products and bringing that in. And it just, it was clear as day to me that we needed to collaborate. We needed to build partnerships because this really wasn't something that we should own. This is something that affects all of us. And so we all need to get involved. And so that quickly shifted to what you're saying, which is doing it together. Excellent. Well, Alan, thank you so much for making time for this conversation today. I do have just one last question, and I have to say it's one of my favorites, but if there's um, someone out there that has your Glory Bee products today, what should they know about sustainability at Glory Bee? Well, I think uh, they should know that we work as hard as the bees to make sure that we sustain our hive here at Glory Bee and deliver on the sustainability promise. That's what I would want people to know. I love that. Great takeaway. Again, Alan, thank you so much for spending time today. It's been great, Jennifer. Thanks for having me on.